go. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is the video for Heidi Weinberg, Genetic Equilibrium, and if I'm screaming, I apologize. Um, first things first, the idea behind Heidi Weinberg is that it is showing a population that is not evolving. And by not evolving, that means the allele frequencies stay the same. So in Heidi Weinberg, and maybe I should have this done beforehand on equilibrium, they assume certain factors are true. They assume that, number one, there is no movement in or out of the population. They call it immigration and emigration. Two, they assume there's no mutation. So their DNA doesn't change, their alleles don't change. Three, your traits cannot affect your survival or reproduction. So there's no struggle for survival. Four, you can have hold on, no sexual selection. And what that means is that Mates will not pick mates on traits. Like they will only randomly mate. They can only randomly mate. And so using these four things, they say if one through four is true, then the frequency of the alleles will be constant in a population. So what that means is that they will not change at all and that this population will go through generation after generation after generation and never, ever, ever change. Any questions? No, but that doesn't really happen. Okay, so yeah, great example. So the student in the classroom after new Miss Shealy says, there you go, this doesn't really happen. And people are like, well, how can we use this? So there are a couple ways to use this. The one I want you to focus on right now is this idea of if one through four are true, the population doesn't evolve. Mrs. Shealy says, well, that doesn't happen, so what must be true? If these are not met, then allele frequencies should be changing, and that means populations evolve. If you can find somewhere in a cave deep underground a population where all these things are true, you should be able to watch them and see that they are not evolving. So over millions of years, they would just stay the same. So basically, it's helping to prove evolution kind of in a backwards way, sure. saying that since there are no cases of non-evolution, evolution must be true. Okay. The other thing that Hardy Weinberg helps is with these, true for a theoretical population, you now can start calculating allele frequencies for populations and predicting what they're going to be in the future. The prediction will hopefully be wrong, because it'll say it's, it, the allele frequencies stay the same, mm -hmm. and you'll see this curve off, the allele frequencies change, and you'll be able to say mathematically, this population's changing, that's evolution. Okay. So I just want to bring you through the equations and then the... Uh, video will be over. No, we want the video to continue. <laughs> so, first thing, we're going to let the letter P is going to be a dominant allele. And we'll call that B. The letter is unimportant. The capitalization is Q is your recessive. And we're going to make that be a lowercase b. And what Hardy Weinberg said was, if you take up all the dominant alleles and all the recessive alleles, those should be the entire set of alleles in a gene pool. And if you remember back in the day, I lectured a little bit, and we talked about gene pools. You pick a certain size of a population, and you're looking more at just the genes, the alleles in the population, and not so much the individual. So let's say we've got, I don't know, 20 alleles in the population, or in the pool. And we'll make four of them dominant. And the frequency, P, would be 4 over 20, which happens to be, help me out, Shaley, 20%? Uh, no, yeah. No. 
Four, yeah, 20%. Okay. So it's 20%, but if you're going to do a um, ratio, it's 0.2. So now the first equation you have to know is they said the ratio of, or the percent occurring of the dominant allele, P, plus the percent occurring of the recessive allele, Q, is going to equal every allele in that population. 100% or 1. And so with this, we know that P is 0.2. We don't know Q, but we know it equals 1. Mm -hmm. We can do simple algebra, and you can find out that the recessive allele is in 80% of the genes in the gene pool. 0 0.8 is 80%. You mm -hmm. multiply by 100 and you get that. So now they went a step further. And they said, you can also then begin to look at individuals like animals and plants that tend to be, um, not dihybrid, help me out. Heterozygous. No, no, no. Diploid. Diploid. Thank you. Diploid. So in other words, they said oh, this. Oh, okay. I can take P squared, and that would represent the individuals that were big B, big B. I can add up those individuals to all, like Ms. Shealy said, the heterozygous individuals. And you remember, P is big B, Q is little b. The two there is because in math, it's important that you count not only the big B, little b, but the little b, big b individuals. In science, the order doesn't matter. We just put the capitals first because it looks more familiar to us. And then you say Q squared, which is the little b, little b, are homozygous recessive individuals. And if you look, you can't have any other individuals but these three, so the whole population must be made of those individuals. Mm -hmm. And now I can use my numbers here. I've got a P of 0.2 and a Q of 0.8, and I can figure out the percentage of individuals who should be each of these three things in a population. Okay. Mathematically, if I did this. Can I ask a question? Yes. On your big B, big B plus big B, little b, shouldn't you have a two in front of big B, little b? Oh, right here? Yeah. Yeah, I could, but does it matter? It's going to when you multiply it out. Right, but I'm not going to use this at all. I, mean, oh. I, I can do that. That's fine. Sorry. I'm just saying that in biology, it doesn't matter which order, whereas in science or in math, you've got to account for both right. PQ and QP. Um, Oh, so basically what I'm saying is the reason you use this, you can predict mathematically where a population will be. Like, I'm thinking that 70% of them will be homozygous recessive. Mm -hmm. And then experimentally, if you find that only 20% are homozygous recessive, you can begin to say, hey, evolution's occurring. Like, the homozygous recessive individual, these little b, little b's, either don't live, they've been weeded out, but some kind of evolution's going on here. And that's really the basic function of math in Hardy Weinberg. And if you guys have any questions, you should post them down below. I see people do that in videos. Uh, and, uh, you know, forgive the first video, I'm just kind of looking if it works out. Any other questions, Mr. Shelley? No. I'm good. Right. Thank Goodbye, you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for doing your homework.